Today we celebrate the memorial of Saint Bernard of Corleone. He's a Franciscan saint who was recently canonized by Pope John Paul II on June 10th of 2001. Saint Bernard was born in Sicily, the town of Corleone, in 1605. He was a shoemaker following in the trade that his father taught him. But then uh, he really didn't like uh, being a shoemaker, and once his father died, he abandoned the trade and uh, gave, him up, gave himself over to worldly adventures. He became a fencer and was particularly gifted physically, and so he became a very good fencer, practicing all the time and entering into duels with whomever he could. He lived a disordered life, uh, but at the same time, he did still practice certain devotions. There was a crucifix, which was venerated by the people of the town, and St. Bernard uh, took it upon himself to make sure that there was, there was always a lamp lit uh, before the crucifix to honor our Lord crucified. St. Bernard also had a devotion to our Holy Father, St. Francis. And it's probably for these two reasons uh, that he later on gained the grace of conversion. Because it happened one day that he entered into a, a sinful duel with another man and mortally wounded him. Then that man's other friends uh, were after St. Bernard and wanted to take revenge upon him. So he fled the town and uh, went into hiding and as so often happens in the difficult moments of a person's life, uh, can be an opportune moment for grace to work in the soul. And so it was with St. Bernard as well. God's grace touched his heart and brought him around to a full conversion. St. Bernard eventually sought entrance into the Capuchin Franciscan order and was accepted as a lay brother. And throughout his years as a Capuchin, he distinguished himself, especially uh, for the rigorous penances that he practiced. St. Bernard would only allow himself three hours of sleep at night. And this sleep he took on a hard, narrow wooden board. He used a block of wood for his pillow. He also practiced rigorous fasts and regularly scourged himself to blood. Of course, all of these things with all of these extraordinary penances with the permission of his spiritual director. He was given particular gifts from God who was pleased with the penance that he had done in reparation and atonement for his sins. He was given the gift of ardent prayer to always uh, be able to pray with attention, reverence, and devotion. He was also given visions. Our Blessed Mother would appear to him from time to time and in fact uh, announced to St. Bernard his death four months in advance. St. Bernard died this day, January 12th, in 1667. St. Bernard <clears throat> gives us a splendid example uh, for us to follow. It is that each and every one of us, we ought to do penance for the sins of our past life. We need to remember that with every sin that we commit, there comes two things. The guilt for that sin, and also the punishment due to those sins. Now the guilt is forgiven by God in the sacrament of penance, when the priest gives us absolution. Or, if the sins happen to be venial, God can even forgive us um, by an Our Father, by praying in Our Father, an act of contrition. Uh, sacramental absolution isn't necessary for the forgiveness of venial sins, uh, but it is the ordinary means to obtain uh, God's forgiveness of the guilt of that sin 
if it happened to be mortal. But there still is the punishment, the reparation that needs to be made either in this life by works of charity, works of penance, or in the next life in purgatory. And so for this reason, we ought to follow St. Bernard's example of living a penitential life. One, because we are all sinners. We're all sinners, at least venial sins. And that is rare that somebody go through their whole life without ever committing a mortal sin. It is a grace that has been given to certain saints. We think of St. Therese of the Child Jesus. It seems that she had never commit a mortal sin, but it's, again, that's a rare grace. And each of us, we all know the sins that we have committed. And we know perhaps they were worse than what St. Bernard had done. And so how much more should we be motivated to live a life of penance and sacrifice? As our Lord said, unless you do penance, you shall all likewise perish. Penance is incumbent on each and every Christian to live a penitential life. Now, they don't have to be great or extraordinary like the ones that St. Bernard practiced, but nevertheless, each of us can do our own sort of penance, the small sacrifices that we can make at meal times to maybe sacrifice some food that we have a particular liking for and instead take something that is uh, less preferable to our taste and to what we crave. We could also maybe rise 20 minutes earlier in the morning to get in an extra rosary the day during the day. We could go to sleep maybe 20 minutes later than we normally do. Again, to get in, give time to pray an extra rosary. Of course, there's always the penance of almsgiving as well. If we're accustomed to maybe putting $10 in the collection basket at our local parish. Maybe we can add another five and sacrifice some other thing that we would have used that money for. And finally, in a spirit of penance, we should always accept all of the crosses and trials that God permits to come our way. Again, in reparation and atonement for our past sins. St. Bernard of Corleone, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.